guys so today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different um, my wife's car this is a 2013 Passat TDI um, nothing special it's just lowered in wheels if anybody's wondering but uh, um, she needs brake pads so brake pads came in um, the brake tool and I gotta fix this little thing here but yeah brake pads came in and uh, so we're gonna go ahead and swap the brake pads out All right, guys. Um, so, haven't really done much. Just got the got it on jack stands, doing one side at a time. I'm doing front and rear as well. Um, that's kind of your call. My fronts are fairly low, as you can see here. I hope you guys can see that where the brake part like actually stops, like the material. So, um, I went with some EBC pads. Um, I've used them quite a few times in the past. Um, they're supposed to be like a better than OEM, you know, but semi sport, you know, kind of blah blah blah. But um, I've had good results with them. You know, they last a long time. They wear very well. They stopping power is good. So I like them. And uh, they're really not that expensive um, in my opinion. But uh, it's the EBC green stuff is what I got. So here, are the, here's one of the front pads right here. Um, they have like a few different um, variations. They have yellow stuff, red stuff, and green stuff. The green stuff, typically you want I've used them on stock rotors. I've never seen a big deal. They stop really well. Um, I haven't seen any kind of crazy wear on my old GLI. I had them on stock rotors and they were fine. So if somebody thinks otherwise or had some bad experiences, I'm um, sorry, but I haven't had any issues, but it's kind of your call if you want to replace the rotors. Like I said, these, it feels, it looks like there's a lot of wear here and it feels, you know, it looks like you might feel it, but it's more of just like a, the, I guess because of the brake pad so there's actually no grooves here it's pretty smooth so um, um, yeah so these pads cost me about 130 bucks shipped for front and rear so it was like 75 for the front and like 50 50 something for the rear so it's not too bad but um to do these all you're gonna need is a seven millimeter um, hex and there's right back here there's this piece right here this little nipple goes in here you remove that there's one on the bottom you put your hex in there you break it loose and what that's going to do is it's going to remove the caliper from the bracket and from the rotor we're going to leave we're going to leave the actual caliper bracket on because all we're doing is replacing pads so basically all you're going to do is pop it out pop your pads out use your brake caliper tool to push the piston back Put the new pads in, set the, the caliper back on, tighten it down, and you're done. It's pretty straightforward. Um, caliper tool, it's similar to the one you get in AutoZone. Um, this was like 30 bucks on on Amazon. Um, you don't need anything fancy, man. I mean, if you you know if you're an actual technician and you're doing this every day, you know, you work at a dealership, maybe it'd be worth buying like a Matco. Because a lot of my tools are Matco from when I used to be a tech and uh, or snap on or whatever if that's up to you but these work just as good and it's not like I do brake pads you know every single day I only do them you know every now and then uh, on my personal cars and that's about it so um, yeah so that's where we're at now and I'll show you when we get further all right all right guys quick little update so I forgot to mention you do have to remove this little pin be careful not to bend it too much or to you know potentially break it because it's going to be you need this you know it go this is the one that was going right here like this and if you see mine is marked with the white and white uh my white was still there so i'm just gonna go ahead and use it like that but this is how it goes you just got to get some needle nose in back here pull it out of the caliper and also when you get the caliper out as you can see i have mine sitting on top um you don't want it pulling on your brake line like don't let them hang which a lot of you probably have already heard about that. So I found one that works with my brake caliper. This one is not like my GLI. Um, my GLI was a little bit different on the front, but I mean, that's why this kit's pretty good because it comes with multiple variations. So, okay, so this is gonna be a real skeptical part. A lot of people are like, you should open your bleeder valve when you're pushing the piston back. Some people say it doesn't matter. Some people say, 
um, you're fine, you know, the way it is. I've always done it without opening the bleeder valve. I know a lot of mechanics that I've worked with that do the same way. The only thing we do to prevent potential damage to the ABS is you go slow. You see how I'm going like really, really slow? That's all you really need, you know. Um, you don't want to like really crank on it super fast and push that piston back really crazy fast because I, you know, we've seen guys do that and that's when I've seen stuff get damaged. So I'm just, you know, just barely putting any pressure on it. Um, if it's the right one and if your caliper's fine, you know, and you have the right adapter, it'll go in. Like this one's going in real nice and easy, you know, just real nice and smooth until it stops. So I'm just going real nice and easy as you see here. Um, not too fast, not too, you know. So now I feel it, it stopped. So I'm gonna back off of it and then you can, um, you know, I'll loosen this up, pull your tool out and boom, your piston is back in place. And now it's just ready for the new pads. All right guys, so here it is, all installed. Just put the caliper inside the hole first like you saw the one with the little clip on it you set this one on the rotor that's the easiest way to do it and uh, some cars it might be a little difficult to get it on other cars like this one is slid right over no problems then you got to put this bracket back and uh, make sure it's lined up here and if it doesn't want to go in here just give it a light little tap like I give it a light little tap with my ratchet slid right in the holes make sure it's positioned correctly and that's it so now we're gonna move on to the back all right guys, so same principle for the back. Um, this one's a little bit different. You have a 13 millimeter nut here, and then you have a square nut here. Uh, for me, a 19 millimeter wrench fits over that square nut to hold it while you break it, you know, while you hold it loose. On some other Volkswagens that I've done, instead of being a square nut, there's like a 14 or 15 millimeter nut just like this, but here, or this is a bolt, then the nuts here, you just have to put the wrench here in the, the other wrench here break it loose and then you can take it out by hand sometimes it just depends but these two one here and one here is the same thing like the front of this car and don't worry about all this other mumbo jumbo like don't get freaked out this is just your brake line this is your e-brake line that's connected to the back of your caliper that's one thing to make sure make sure your e-brake is not engaged because it will be a bitch to get this off and get it back on and potentially you might be able to break something i don't know if you really can but i know sometimes i've forgotten and it's a pain in the ass to get it all taken care of so yeah that's where we're at now all right so here we are got the old brake pads out for these brake pads you see these little clips in here you want to make sure they stay there you need those clips so without damaging them easiest way is you see it goes in and you just push forward so you just have to push them back slide them out there goes one there goes two on the back side this one has one of the little nipple uh, caliper pieces so what this is is that if you're not familiar that's why I got the little brake kit because it comes with everything. You find one that matches, that has these two little prongs here, matches the nipples. And then what this one does is as you push in, it twists in as well. That's how you push the caliper back. All right, so here we are. We pushed the caliper back, got the new pads in. Uh, it's loose because I haven't tightened it up. I was just letting you know, tighten it up by hand first. Make sure it lines up just like any other bolt when you're putting it in. And go ahead and tighten it down. Uh, then the brake grease is applied like I said make sure the clips are in properly and make sure they're the brake pads are all the way flat and centered because if they're kind of like crooked or something um, when the when the caliper comes out sometimes it could straighten it out and it'll you know lay flat but you can risk potentially binding the caliper to the rotor so it's gonna wear unevenly and you're gonna have bad braking so um, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down put the wheel back on and now we just have to finish up the other side all right all right, so everything's tightened down. And uh, one thing I for did forget to mention is it is gonna be um, like mine. If I push it hard enough, you'll have a little bit of play. That's okay because you know the pistons push back. You don't want a massive amount, but if you have a little bit of play, like you see how I can move it a little bit forward and back, that's gonna be fine because when the caliper compresses, it's gonna hold them straight. Another thing I forgot to mention when I was doing the front and the back, this goes for all of them. When you put the brake, um, grease on make sure you don't get anything on the rotor and if you do just take a dry rag or some brake clean um, and spray it 
and that's another thing on the caliper side um, where my rubber grommet was it was a little dirty like you can see this dirt right here so all I did was clean it real carefully without damaging the grommet and spray it with some brake clean just brake clean dries almost immediately as long as you don't go too excessive with it you'll be okay it won't like tear up the rubber because it, it dries so fast and won't eat away at it um, so just spray it a little bit of brake clean you don't want any dirt or anything compromising your, your caliper travel and also you don't want anything getting in between your brake pad and the rotor surface so go all right guys so i finished the the driver's side rear and i got to the front to check about that brake sensor and i will let you guys know that my 2013 passat does not have the brake pad wear sensor um I looked everywhere just to be on the safe side but I mean like you can see here it's not like it got cut off the old one there's nothing there so the reason why I looked it up just to be on the safe side and yeah I couldn't find anything definitive that said if my car came with brake sensors but this is the box for EBC and as you can see here uh, these are the fronts and it says Tiguan 1.4 uh, turbo or 2 liter turbo diesel 2008 and up so the, a lot of Volkswagens they share a lot of parts so EBC is made from the United Kingdom if you guys are not aware so um, you know they have turbo diesel Tiguan's which is fucking awesome because I wish I could get one and uh, um, so I guess the Tiguan's and you know one of the other vehicles that's listed on there have the brake pad sensor mine do not so for the Passat all right guys so we got done with the brake pads and going ahead and gonna take it around the block um like i said before you want to go ahead and um you know go up to about 20 to 25 miles an hour and uh just hit your brakes fairly hard to get that braking coating off you won't get all of it but what you're trying to do is get the, the pad seated so i'm gonna get up to about 25 miles an hour like right there and just so yeah they stop really really well so uh yeah that was a lot quicker than i thought uh because i did my mom's mini cooper one time and it was not like seating i guess that that well and uh so it was like a little bit of like slack you can feel like sliding a little bit so um ebc states that uh, in their little manual that comes with the brake pads that you may hear some like brake squeal and brake noise for the first you know all it says up potentially up to about 200 miles so it says you know to drive a little bit more careful the first few days that you're um after the pads have been installed like i went ahead and um installed them today so but they feel real nice like i'm barely putting any pressure and it's uh they're stopping pretty good so um i just want to get some use into them before my wife drives it um for the first time so just forget.